السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله We mentioned earlier that um, in this series, we will talk about the 10 outer actions that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these outer actions would also get us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the outer action that we are going to talk about today is fasting. Uh, fasting is an older way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, all previous mes messages talked about fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentioned that uh, in Surah uh, uh, in Ayah 183, he said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O oh, you who have believed, it decreed upon you is fasting. As it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. So fasting was decreed before Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the result of fasting at the end of the ayah. He says, so that you may become righteous. Taqwa. You will have taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about taqwa in uh, so many ayahs. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized taqwa in so many narrations. So... Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed one day at his heart and he said, At-taqwa ha huna, at-taqwa ha huna, at-taqwa ha huna. And he repeated that three times. Taqwa is here. And he was pointing to his heart. So if you want to know what is taqwa uh, and you want to gain taqwa, you want to become righteous, you have to connect your heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that there will be a download from his heart to your heart. So the taqwa would be downloaded to your heart. So the outcome of fasting is to achieve taqwa. So what is fasting? Fasting is a known worship and it is to abstain from something for a certain period of time. And that thing is eating, drinking, having relation with the spouse. And that would be from uh, Fajr Adhan until Maghrib Adhan. So you stop a little bit before the Adhan of Fajr and uh, the uh, call, calling for the Adhan of Maghrib starts with Allahu Akbar. You make your dua and you start your, your food. There are certain uh, rules for fasting. There is a lot of fiqh issues. There are a lot of uh, uh, jurisprudence about it. We're not going to talk about that here. 
We're talking about fasting spiritually. What does fasting do to us? So fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buniya al-Islam ala khams. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh wa iqami salah wa itai zakah wa hajji al-bayti wa sawmi ramadan. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the superstructure of Islam is raised on five pillars. And he's counting now the five pillars, witnessing that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger, establishing the prayer, paying zakah, performing pilgrim to the house of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba, and fasting the month of Ramadan. So fasting is one of the five main pillars in Islam. In fact, it's a way, uh, it's a form of worship that involves mainly the heart. Shaitan runs in man the same way blood does. So, we have to tighten the uh, passages of shaitan. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna shaytana la yajri min ibn adam majra al-dam fadayyuku majarihi bil jua'a. So shaytan runs in man, as I mentioned, the same way blood does. So tighten it from tighten it for him, make it hard for him to, to, to do what he is doing, to do whatever he wants to do by being hungry, which means by fasting. All bad deeds that a person accumulates are mainly because of shaitan. He whispers, he adorns the haram. He makes a person slip. Uh, the first slip is very hard for the believer. He would say, how can I do this, uh, this thing? I cannot. I cannot watch something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbid forbidden me from watching. I cannot hear something that Allah has forbidden me of hearing it. I cannot steal something that Allah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden st stealing. So shaitan would whisper and whisper and adorns haram until he makes a person slip. And the first slip is very hard for the believer. But once this first slip happens, the next slip will be easier. It won't be hard for that, that believer. And so on, the... the, the uh, Next slip will be easier until a person would not think that he is disobeying Allah. Do you know what's the reason for that? It's simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained this in ayah 14 of Surah al mutaffifin when he said, Kalla bal ala ma kanu yaksimun. No, rather the satan has covered this. Uh, sorry, the stain has covered their hearts of that which they were earning. So each bad deed leaves a black dot on the heart. If a person does not clean it with istighfar and tawba, trying to erase this dot. Then, with the uh, there will be another black dot with the next sin. 
And until the heart becomes all black, because there was nothing done against this black dot. There was no istighfar. There was no toba. There was no asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance. Nothing. So the whole heart now is black. And the person, when he gets this black heart, he will not be able to differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. So when a person fasts, and especially in Ramadan, he cares a lot about his manners. Why? Because he doesn't want to say anything that would ameliorate his fasting or make him lose the reward of his fasting. So he keeps away from lying. He keeps away from backbiting. He keeps away from making, breaking the hearts of people. He keeps away from all similar deeds. He cares about his fasting. He stays alert to his words. He stays alert to his actions so that he, he will not be classified with the group of people whose fasting is nothing but being hungry and being thirsty. And he, by doing this, he always remembers the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So by being alert, he always remembers the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, Abu Hurairah narrated an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as-siyam junna, fa-idha kana ahadukum sa'iman fala yarfath, wala yajhal, فَإِنِ مُرُؤٌ قَاتَلَهُ أَوْ شَاتَمَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ So Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said Fasting is a protection. الصيام جنة So how does it protect someone? So when, when, when you are fasting, do not behave tactlessly. Do not behave thoughtlessly. Do not behave foolishly. And if, if someone argues with you or abuses you, just say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. So ignore people. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ أو in, uh, في رواية أخرى قال يترك مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said if one does not avoid lies if he does not avoid false conduct, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need that he should abstain from his food or his drink. So we have to be very careful in Ramadan. So what happens in Ramadan? What are the levels of those who fast in Ramadan? So what are the levels of fasting in Ramadan? There are three categories for fasting. The first one is called Sawm al-Awam. Sawm al-Awam is the basic, the basic uh, way of fasting. And it happens uh, just someone is uh, hungry and is thirsty and he doesn't have a reward for that. 
So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, رُبَّ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشُ Some people who fast, they get nothing except being, being hungry and thirsty. Why? Because they don't care about any other thing. They don't care about their eyesight. They don't care about their hearing. They don't care about their tongue. They don't care about what they say. They don't care about anything. The only thing that they are doing is they are not eating, not drinking. I'm not having uh, uh, a, a, a sexual uh, relation with their spouse. The other category, the other level of fasting is Sawmul Khawas, the fasting of the uh, elite. So what is this type of fasting? And it is to abstain from anything that breaks the fast. But it also, it also uh, takes care of uh, the eye, the ear, the tongue, the hand. And the, the 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 feet. So what the eyes are hearing, what the the, the uh, sorry, what the eyes are looking at, what the ears are listening to, what the tongue is saying, what the hands are doing, where the feet are going. So that person stops from anything that is prohibited. Now. The third way, the third level of fasting is called khawas. It's called the fasting of the elite of the elite. So what is it? What is this level? This is where all of us should be. It's the fasting of the heart or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only uh, abstaining from eating, drinking, or having a relation with the spouse, no. Nothing, nothing, doing nothing except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. صَوْمُ الْقَلْبِ عَمَّا سِمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى So the heart abstains from anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the heart would always be uh, uh, busy mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward for this type of fasting, the reward for this level is very high. Once one of the companions said, I heard the messenger of Allah وسلم, saying, so in Ramadan, the gates of paradise are opened and the gates of fire are closed. The devils are chained up. A caller calls out every night, O oh, doer of good, proceed. O oh, doer of evil, desist. So we want to we want to be of the group of the doers of good, eh? not only in Ramadan and out of Ramadan also. We want all our days to be like the days of Ramadan. We want to be alert to worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala all the time. 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that he was uh, the most generous of people. And he, he was the most generous even during Ramadan. He used to give alms to poor and to the needy. And he, he would say to his companions, the best charity is charity in Ramadan. He was the most generous, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So people uh, always try to imitate Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for this reason, you find that most people like to pay their zakah during Ramadan, knowing that uh, the reward will be multiple. It will be multiplied. And so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam سُئِلَ أَيُّ الصَّوْمِ أَفْضَلُ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانِ فَقَالَ شَعْبَانِ لتعظيم رمضان قيل فأي الصدقة أفضل قال صدقة في رمضان So the Prophet وسلم, was once asked which fast was most virtuous after Ramadan so people wanted to know so he said Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said Shaban in honor of Ramadan and you know that uh, the siyam of the six days in Shaban, uh, uh, in Shawwal, uh, sorry. So in Shaban, we have to, uh, to, to fast in Shaban. But do not fast after the uh, mid, uh, middle of Shaban just to get your body to be stronger for Ramadan. Of course, except for the for the ladies who have makeup, of course, they can make it up, of course. So, so, uh, so when he was asked which charity is best, he said charity in Ramadan. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, when he said charity in Ramadan, eh, he did not mean only giving money in Ramadan. He وسلم, urged the companions to, to break the fast of other people who were fasting and he emphasized a big reward for doing so. So the Prophet uh, he said, he who provides a fasting person something with which to break his fast will earn the same reward as the one who was observing the fast without diminishing any, any way the reward Word of the latter. So, how generous that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Man fattara sa'iman kana lahu mithlu ajrihi ghayra annahu la yanqusu min ajri sa'im shay. So, be generous in Ramadan. Now, uh, Ibn Ata'Allah's secondary, we all know that he has the book of wisdoms. And one of the wisdoms that he talked about, in that wisdom he said, رُبَّمَا أَعْطَاكَ فَمَنَعَكَ وَرُبَّمَا مَنَعَكَ فَأَعْطَاكَ Maybe he gives you and it ends up to be a withhold. And maybe he withholds and it ends up to be a giving to you. How, how can this be applied to Ramadan? How can this be applied to fasting? 
Um, when fasting, it's apparent that food, drink, and in addition to some permissible things, they are prohibited. So you are being withhold, withheld from doing some stuff. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds you, but he gives in return many rewards. So outwardly, it's abstaining. It's prohibition of something. But in return, in fact, it's, it ends up to be a giving. How? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Assawmuli wa ana ajzi bihi kulla hasanatim bi ashri amthaliha. So, um, Let's let's correct this. Um, every good deed is for me. Every good deed is for me. So every good action is rewarded by ten folds. Up to seven hundred times. إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ فَهُوَ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Except fasting, which is for me. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Fasting is for me and I rewarded it. I reward it. So angels know that if you do this type of good deed, you will get this reward. If you do this, you will get this reward, except for fasting. Allah is saying fasting is for me and I reward for it. So for all these reasons and for many other reasons, people like to fast. And and they know that Ramadan is the month of uh, being a in a school. How? Ramadan is a school itself, by itself. As we mentioned, it, it uh, makes a person alert of what to say what not to say, what to do, what not to do, where to go, where not to go. So a person would be alert that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is overwatching him. So he tries his best to be the most obedient person. So this is how, as if someone is in a school and the principal is always present. The principal is always present. So he behaves, that person behaves. And Ramadan is also a school that would make a person behave. So what happens? Ramadan is a school that would make a person behave. He would be alert. So people loved the month of Ramadan. They know that they are uh, challenging themselves and they are winners. They know that uh, shaitan is chained. So the effect of shaitan is not there on them. And they know that with, 
with giving a little bit more effort, they will overcome other things that would whisper the nafs, the hawa. They, so they can, they can control themselves. So Ramadan by itself is a month of being patient that you don't want to do anything that would uh, uh, break your fast. You don't want to do anything that would lessen the reward of your fasting. And they know that when they do this, then they will be highly rewarded. Why? Because they will attain the status of taqwa. And they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in Surah Al-Zumar, al -Zumar, uh, ayah number 10, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ So those who practice patience, they would get their reward without, without any reckoning, without. So, so, so their reward will be high. They will enjoy that word so fasting would make a person victorious over his nafs so he knows that he is doing his best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so fasting is nothing but a school to teach a person to be on the right track So, what happens now? People want to, uh, want to do more fasting outside of Ramadan. So, the Messenger of Allah uh, uh, was asked one. So, some, one of the companions came to him. And he said to him, uh, he said, I want to fast, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, okay, fast one day during the month and you will get, observe fast for a day and uh, there would be the reward for you for the rest, for the rest of the days. He said, I am capable of doing more than this, Ya Rasulullah. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, observe fast for two days and there will be a re reward for you for the rest. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I am healthy, I am capable of doing more than this. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Observe fast for three days. So observe fast for three days and there will be the reward for you for the rest of the days. And the man insisted and he said to, to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I am capable of doing more than this. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, um, thereupon, after, after hearing this, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then observe fast uh, which is the best that Allah's consider. It's the fast of Dawood alayhi salam, Prophet David. And he said, he used to observe fast one day and break on the other day. So that companion loved this. And he, 
he kept on doing this all his life. But when he became older, he, he fasting became a little harder on him. And the older he got, fasting becomes more harder on him. Until one day he said, I wish I took the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is good to do your best in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't overburden yourself. Don't overburden yourself. Always think that if you want to do something, you need to maintain it. So where is your limit? Where is your limit? And do not go over your limit. Do not. Because one day you will regret doing that. And you don't want to do something, a type of worship. And then you stop that worship. You want to go on. And for this reason, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, قَلِيلٌ تَدُومُ عَلَيْهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ كَثِيرٍ مُنْقَطِعٍ If you do something, even if it's just uh, very little, but continuous, it's way more, much better than doing one thing very in uh, in your utmost and you cannot keep it you cannot maintain doing it you stop it after a while you cannot keep up doing it so when you do your worship you need to know what uh, what to choose and how much of your time you can give to this type of worship and how much time you can keep maintaining this how long can you maintain it a very important thing that while fasting a person feels closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you know why No shaitan, no whisper. One feels hungry. What does this mean? The nafs or the spirit becomes closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it has less, when the person eats less. So you feel that. You want to make more dua, you want to make more worship, you want to pray 20 rakahs of uh, uh, tarawih. And after that, you want to wake up before Fajr, you want to pray more, you want to read Quran. You will do things during Ramadan while you are fasting, which you don't normally do out of Ramadan. The spirit gets closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes easier. When this happens, always remember to make dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us in this ayah. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 186. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when my servants ask you, O oh Muhammad, about me, concerning me, indeed I am near them. 
So I'm close to them. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. I answer someone's call. So make sure to wake up before Fajr and make your dua. This is the closest time to you, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah descends down to the lower sky and he says, Ala min mustaghfirin fa'afira lah, ala min ta'ibin fa'atubu alayh, ala min fa'astajibu lah, ala min sa'ilin fa'u'atih. So is, is there someone who is repenting? I would accept the repentance. Is there someone who is asking for forgiveness? I will forgive him. Is there someone who is asking for anything? I will answer him. So just know when to ask and what to ask. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu told us that we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things that would benefit us for the day after. So the best, if you don't know what to ask, then ask Allah for the best that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask him. And the dua is known. And I will, I will say it now. Let me finish the ayah. So, So let them respond to me by obedience and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. So make dua, Allah will answer your calls. So what is the dua? And I will end up with this. So if we want to talk more and more and more about fasting, it's not enough to cover it with just this short period of time. So I will end up with this dua that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. So we will say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm asking you of the goods that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you for. Wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I seek refuge in you, ya Allah, from the things that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sought refuge in you from. Allahumma inni as'aluka min al-khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'lam. Ya Allah, I'm asking you from the goods, from the khayr, all of it, close or away from, I ask you from the whole thing. وأعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمت منه وما لم أعلم. And I seek refuge in you from the evil that's close or far away with which I know or I don't know. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم used to ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We are asking Allah for the goods that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to ask him. We are asking Allah to, to, to keep us away from the bad, from the evil that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, asked him to, to, be, to be away from. So this is what they say. Sayyidina Bilal came to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and to see uh, there was Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abu Bakr and they were making lots of du'as and du'as and du'as. And he looked at, at them and he said to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, I don't know how to make same similar du'as. I just say so and so. And he said, around it we make our du'as. So this is the core. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix your heart, to give you the sound heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, on the day of judgment, nothing will benefit you except if you have a sound heart. 
إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. So, on the day of judgment, if you are on a good relation with Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in this dunya, so on the day of judgment, you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say to him, Ya Allah, I came with a good heart. It's the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم. This is the sound heart. So, Ya Allah, we ask you to give us the blessings of fast, to grant us the blessings of taqwa. We ask you of the khayr that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you from. And we, we ask you to, get, to keep us on the right path. We ask you to guide us, to guide our children to whatever pleases you. To, to always provide us with the good sohbah for us and for our children. We want you to help us raise good children who, who follow the five pillars about around which the whole islam is built is built up we want them we want our children to be righteous ya rasulullah and one way of doing that is by fasting so we want you ya allah to make it easy for us to make it easy for our children and to guide us to whatever pleases you, Ya Allah. So, we want to have the good manners that we follow during Ramadan and when we are fasting. We want to have the good manners not only while we are fasting, but all the time. We want you to help us, Ya Allah. And inshallah, until we meet next next session, inshallah, uh, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.